EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to one of our favorite spots, Venerable Soldier Field in Chicago. Just a short time ago, this crowd loud enough to shake the foundations of this nearly century-old building. They are ready for football indeed in Chicago as their guys get set to do battle with the Seattle Seahawks. They'll throw on first down with Trubisky. Shaheen, the tight end on the right side. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. A gain of six there on first. Charles, you are the master of abstract facts. So who would you say is the best player ever drafted from Ashland University in Ohio? How about the only one ever drafted from there? Adam Shaheen, the tight end. Went to the Chicago Bears. Began his college career, though, as a basketball player, Division II in the state of Pennsylvania. Throwing here, Trubisky. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Allen Robinson, the intended receiver. And it's third down. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Here's Trubisky to throw, and he hits the tight end. It's Deion Sims, and he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. A very solid gain of 27. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh, boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 42-yard line. Again, it's Trubisky, and his throw's going to be incomplete. Deion Sims is tied in the intended target, and that'll bring up second down. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, they'll miss on 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of 10 times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. A first carry now for Jordan Howard. Flash the stick skills, but didn't get a ton from it. Stopped short of the 35. They get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave them with a third and four. And that was a good run. This was only one of nine guys to go over 1,000 yards in 2017, and I think you can't let him run wild here. What do you think, 100 yards, the measuring stick? Always. That is the threshold. You want to keep him under that if you want to play good defense. They run play action for Howard. Now Trubisky. And that is incomplete. The linebacker Bobby Wagner able to get back in coverage and knock it free. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. And that is no good. He gave it a good run. That wasn't more than a foot or so wide to the left. And this will remain a scoreless game. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. So the long field goal misses, and now the reverse. You're in a tough spot defensively. They'll start the drive at the 43. They go play action here on first down. And he's got the open man. It's Marshall on the comebacker. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 15 yards there for number 15. And another thing that makes a comeback route really effective is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, receiver's breaking away from the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. A nice chunk of yardage picked up there. Now Wilson on first down. Looking left sideline, incomplete. Tyler Lockett was the target there. And that'll bring up second down. 
And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Throwing again, Wilson. And nearly an interception here on their opening drive. But instead, third down. I think we'll see more of them trying to get him the football out of the backfield. They love what he can do in open space, and they believe that he creates mismatches they can exploit. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Play action. It's Wilson. Open man. It's Vanette. And a nice gain of 21 yards. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. Now the rookie first rounder from San Diego State, it's Rashad Penny. And he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. In on the stop, the former Georgia Bulldog, Roquan Smith. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. On second down, here's Wilson. It's caught on the left side by Baldwin. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Now it's Wilson. It's caught right side, Dixon. It's a game of six as they're able to convert, and now it's first and goal. That throw's not going to get them a whole lot, but that really didn't matter, did it? They got what they needed on that throw. Picked up the first down, and I'm going cliche here. Game of inches, partner. Absolutely. Well, and you talked to me a lot about opening drives, how key those are to set the tone. You kept the drive alive. Third down conversion here is big. They'll try to run for it with Penny. And he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. Rashad Penny, a nine-yard touchdown run. And the Seahawks have taken a first-quarter lead. And they drew up the counter there. It worked. They're glad they drew up the counter. And a lot of times what you're trying to do is just simply get the defense moving in one direction. Doesn't take much. Even one step's enough. Get them going in one direction and then cut back against the grain and let your running back finish it off and get the work done. Janikowski good with the extra point. And that makes the score 7-0. to kick is Janikowski. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Uh, for the Chicago fans, as the Bears come back on the field here, I, I hate to beat a dead horse, but you, you go back to that opener. What a heartbreaker. They had the 20 to nothing lead in Green Bay, your division rival. Everything was rolling, and then Aaron Rodgers led that a comeback, but how do they rebound from that? That was a tough defeat. Yeah, it really was. I think they said during the game that the 17 to nothing lead at the half for Chicago, that was the biggest deficit Green Bay had had at home since 1958 Wow! in the first half. So that tells you what a big deal it was. How do they rebound? Number one, you embrace the disappointment. You realize how, how bad it was and what an opportunity you let slip away. And then you emphasize all the positives in the game how they ran the football well on offense, how on defense Khalil Mack led a bunch of guys getting after the quarterback. Take that, move forward. They've got a chance to be a pretty decent team. Throw left side complete. That's Burton. 
And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. That catch good for five. It's third down. And, partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. They'll try to run for it with Howard. Now Howard stripped. He lost the football, and the Seahawks have picked it up. And his guys will take over at the 30-yard line. So the defense there, opportunistic. It's nice to give them credit, isn't it? Because so many times it's more a matter of what the offensive guy didn't do. Didn't secure the ball, didn't cover up. In this case, just give credit to where it belongs. Knocked it free, made a big play. Give him a couple on the catch, it's second and eight. I think it's okay that they didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. They go play action with Wilson. Letting one go deep for the end zone. Oh, he almost had it for the pick. A great chance there for the interception in the end zone. Instead, third down. The turnover put them in great field position. They don't want to squander it with third down coming up. No, not at all. And you know what else you do? You make your defense mad. Yeah. They got you the football, gave you a great opportunity. You got to cash in and get some points. On third down, Wilson. And this is going to be incomplete. Charles, that's an important third down stop. You don't want to spot him two touchdowns here early. You're trying to slow momentum down. You've already given up the score. They're coming right back at you. You're exactly right. Being able to hold them there and force a decision on fourth down, that's big for the defense. And Janikowski bangs it through, and the lead moves to 10 zip. So they recovered the fumble, but ultimately could not take advantage of the short field. Definitely a lost opportunity right there. I mean, they were in prime position to put six on the board, ended up settling for three. Now after the made field goal, here's Sebastian Janikowski to kick it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Onto the field now come the Bears. And last time they coughed it up, led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. Could you sense the relief, though? When they only gave up the field goal, and they were able to trot back out on the field and start this drive, a little more pep in their step because they didn't cost their team a touchdown. But they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession. The coach will just be relieved, though, if they recoup with a score here, right? I think the coach will be ecstatic to see them pick themselves back up and now take it downfield, punch in the end zone without turning it over. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. This is Howard on second down, and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. He'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. On third down, Trubisky. He's going to dump that off to his running back, Cohen. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. A gain of four on the play, and that'll bring up fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. You like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion. And what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. So possession goes over here on the punt. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. 
The Seahawks offense now, they get set to go back to work. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> not one that I've ever met. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. I don't care how many times you tell the story, it never loses its luster for me. Doug Baldwin, undrafted out of Stanford, and plays like a number one receiver should in the NFL. I don't care how you cover him. I don't care that his size isn't great. He's the one that typically comes up with the football. Absolutely. And, oh, his first carry, he loses the football. Wow, that ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. Off the play fake, here's Wilson. He's going to air this half for Baldwin. And that one was nearly picked. Not sure he was accounting for the free safety. That brings up third down. Even the greats in this game, and, and he certainly qualifies as one of them, they're going to have trouble if they continue to throw into double coverage. He better be careful. Throwing in too much double coverage might have a couple of them picked off. And the Seahawks on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This time it's third and three. Now it's Wilson. And that is incomplete. You absolutely have to have this early on, right? Third and short, they elect to throw for it. And that's normal NFL football. They're going to throw on third and short, but you've got to hit it, don't you? Yeah, in the first quarter, like you said, to set the tone, can't connect there. On fourth down, ready to punt, Michael Dixon. Tariq Cohen is deep for the Bears. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And not what he was hoping for there, as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. The Bears offense now getting ready to take over. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. Here's the first carry for Tariq Cohen. And he'll get only a couple up to the 22. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Trubisky with a give to Howard. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. Now we're going to get a stoppage. It appears to be an injured bear on the field. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. The Bears on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and nine. Out of the gun, Trubisky. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Burton. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. It'll be a gain of eight, but it'll also lead to a fourth down. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. Now it's Lockett. 51 yards on the punt there. And possession will switch, hands first and 10. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. 
They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he's brought down after a good game. That one, 28 yards on the ground. Sometimes those lines that are drawn on a grease board or in a playbook, they come to life <laughs> out on the field, don't they? And we just saw that on that outside handoff to the right. That right tackle, he gets excited for that call, doesn't he? He does, because he just wants to dominate his guy and say, listen, I was the point of attack. I took care of business. That's why you're able to get downfield and add all those yards to your total. Yeah, really nice game there. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll bring up a second and 11. Alongside my broadcast partner, Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon hits the Seahawks with a football to begin quarter number two, but they face a second and long to start things out. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's got it across midfield and into Bear territory. Adrian Amos up to make the tackle. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. They go play action now. Wilson under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. Now here's Michael Dixon on for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. They'll begin the drive with Howard. And a short gain here as he gets it up only to about the six. Tackle made by Rasheem Green. That first down play, all you want to do is wedge out any type of space and try and create enough room that if you have to run the punter out there, he can successfully complete the punt. Yeah, he didn't get a ton there, but at least some positive yardage. On second down, here's Trubisky. And this is Gabriel on the catch. And they'll get him down right at around the 11-yard line. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Third and two. Now Trubisky over the middle complete. That's Sims. And he's going to have the first down as he's marked down just shy of the 20. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and put the down marker back to one. Now Trubisky on first down. His throw incomplete. Well, partner, of all the great things that we saw in week one, unfortunately, there was some bad. Quite a few injuries. And the toughest one, Delaney Walker with that knee injury, he's gone for the year. Yeah, and that's really, really difficult for the Tennessee Titans to absorb because in a lot of ways, he's their number one target. He may play tight end, but he was the security blanket for Marcus Mariota. He'll be gone for the year. Greg Olson with the Carolina Panthers, he left the game in a walking boot. But an injury this. And the ball is knocked out. 
And the Seahawks have picked it up. And they'll be at the 18-yard line. Great field position here in the red zone. Often on fumbles, you look at the guy who coughed it up and say, geez, what did he do? But, hey, let's tip the cap to the defense here. Not a problem at all, my man. I'm not going to tip it. I'm going to doff my cap to him. Congratulations. Big-time play. Knocking it free and creating something good for your team. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. One of the surprises of the first round, the Seattle Seahawks selecting running back Rashad Penny out of San Diego State. Highly regarded, but most people thought he would go in the second round. But he did have an incredible senior year at San Diego State. Over 2,200 yards, 23 touchdowns. He resembles Marshawn Lynch in build, but has the ability to take it the distance as well. Had seven kick returns during his career at San Diego State for touchdowns. And a pickup of about four down inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. The Seahawks on third down, two for five to this point. They're up against a third and one situation. They'll try to run for it with Penny. And yeah, this play doesn't go anywhere. Backwards, losing yardage to the 11. And a loss of three to bring up four. It's a little bit different size than they're used to seeing in Chicago playing the middle linebacker position. But undersized or not, his speed is absolutely overwhelming. And when he arrives, he arrives with a thump. The city of broad shoulders loves Roquan Smith. And Janikowski bangs it through. And that'll push the lead up to 13 to nothing. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. Now after the made field goal, here's Sebastian Janikowski to kick it away. Now the return man, this is Benny Cunningham. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And a fumble last time, ball security. Talk about it all the time in the National Football League. They've got to be better at it on this drive. Don't you think that when every team gets together for the first time, I don't care if it's OTAs, mini camps, first and first day of camp in the regular season, Ball security comes up about, what, the second sentence of the coach's yeah. address? And those are so many drills focus on that. All the time, and they do drills to make it even tougher to simulate game situations. Doesn't always work out, though. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets them to second and four. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they bottled them up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. They snap it at one. Now it's Trubisky. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Burton. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Trubisky fighting the former Eagle Burton for the Chicago first. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. On first down, they run with Howard. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 12 yards on back-to-back -back plays there, and that's another first down. At this stage of the game, the run-pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 47. On the handoff, this is Howard. And he loses the football a second time. So it goes as a fumble, but the key thing... Not a fumble loss. Yeah, that, that stat's big, isn't it? I mean, it, I remember watching teams play. The ball might be on the ground a number of times during the game, but if the other team doesn't get it, that's a huge difference in the ball game. And in this case, they were able to retain possession. Right. 
A give to Howard. Making the stop that time, Bobby Wagner. Well, we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. The Bears on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and four. From the gun, it's Trubisky. Going for a right side here, complete. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Trubisky to Gabriel there for a Bears first down. And it all came together there. In breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Trubisky now 11 to 15 through the air. Here's first and 10. From the shotgun is Trubisky. Now the hook up here to Allen Robinson. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15, just shy of the 10. A really nice gain of 25 yards. A first trip to the red zone for the Bears. They've got a first and 10 at the 11. Now Trubisky to throw. That is caught with the seven-yard line. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they've become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Throwing once more, it's Trubisky. Now Trubisky lost the football. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Now Trubisky to throw on second. Got his man, and it's caught for a Chicago touchdown. Allen Robinson, a 15-yard touchdown grab. And the Bears draw a bit closer. Well, that's what I call an answer right there. They gave up a sack on the previous play. How about what they did to finish things off, turning it right back around? That's the response, and that O-line feels a lot better now, don't they? Yeah, without a doubt, because give up the sack on the previous play, that just hurts those guys, because they never want to see their guy get hit. Parkey with the extra point, and it's now 13-7. Here's Parkey now, set to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. Here come the Seahawks now, set to take over on offense. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Good to see this man running again. Here's Chris Carson. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score.
Now Wilson on second down. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. He's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. The Seahawks on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. Here it's third and three. From the gun, it's Wilson. And this is going to be incomplete. And I feel like my man, Old Mo, momentum might be changing jerseys right now. How about what they just got done? They scored a touchdown their last drive. Now here's a three and out. Maybe momentum's getting ready to creep to the other sideline. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Call it 46 yards on the punt, just a single yard on the return as he was covered quickly. And the Bears take over. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. Well, things are starting to move in the right direction. They get the touchdown last drive, then their defense gets them the football back. Yeah, now they have a chance to get the lead if they can put something together here. And I'm eager to see how they decide to do it. If they want to be methodical, or do they want to take the big strike and go after it right now? Looking to throw Trubisky on first down. And his throw is incomplete. He was trying to hit Taylor Gabriel that time. And now it's second down. Well, CD, looking back to last week, one interesting thing certainly was that tie between Pittsburgh and Cleveland. You know, that was the first week one tie since 1971. Yeah, I think our research told us that the Broncos and Dolphins tied 10-10. And remember, overtime was instituted by the NFL starting with the 1974 season. So this is unbelievable, those two teams tied. Cleveland was plus five in turnover margin, had their chances, and got a field goal blocked down the stretch that would have won the game. Yeah, Pittsburgh had a field goal late in OT2, and they missed it wide left. The Bears on third down, three for seven so far in this game. This is third and ten. They run with Howard. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. And now the Seahawks are going to take a timeout here on defense as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's Pat O'Donnell now, standing just outside his own goal line. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. Returnable for Lockett. Call that one an even 60 yards, 6-0. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And out now come the Seahawks. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. What? Green 80. On first and 10, it's Wilson. Baldwin with it over the middle. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And a nice gain of 21 yards. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Now, before this second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. On 
second down, Wilson. And he's going to go down. Back near midfield at the 49. Leonard Floyd in there to get him for a loss of five. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you get three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. To throw is Wilson. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he'll avoid the tackle there with a slide. It's a gain of nine yards. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. So we've come upon halftime with the visiting Seahawks. They're out in front. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Tyler Lockett now with a return. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to come back onto the field. They have the lead, now they'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half, that worked okay, but in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies, try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. We'll see if they do just that. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. They have the lead, now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice solid game. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Here's Wilson looking to throw on second down. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Baldwin. First down Seahawks, Wilson to Baldwin. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle, it doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. They snap it at one. Now Wilson. This is complete. It's Baldwin. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. His fifth catch tonight, and it's good for a first down. A first down carry, and very little there. He might have gotten a yard. Yeah, I think he got a yard to the 41. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. Second down, here's Wilson. He's going to air this half for Baldwin. And the defense has it covered. It's intercepted. Adrian Amos with a pick. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. 
Well, when someone other than the quarterback is throwing the football, it's either beautiful or a disaster, and here it was the latter. Nowhere in between, right? I <laughs> think exactly right. It takes some fortitude to call that type of a play, but when it doesn't work, oh boy, you wish you hadn't. A gain of six there on first. Cool under pressure right there, escaping the pocket and finding what I think was not his primary target. And some of these guys are just so comfortable getting outside of the, the pocket that they'll do it on purpose. Doesn't even need to be a breakdown. Just I, they move and they know it affects the defense because a lot of times you get lost in coverage in the secondary. And I think you're exactly right. Wasn't his primary target. Found a secondary guy who sprang open probably because of his movement out of the pocket. They get six on the pick out there as the drive will continue. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. Trubisky, draw play, gives to Howard, and he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. They go with Howard again. And they're able to get this one across the 35. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there, just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Brandon, we're into the second half, and this offense has not scored a lot of points, and that was another example of why. I think it's time to open things up and start really trying to move the ball. Four down, four down. Up. Right now they'll throw it with Trubisky. Going right side here, and that's complete. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. When the hitch route has run really well, that jab step off the line of scrimmage by the receiver, which is designed to back up the defender and give him a little bit of space, all you want there, get that space, catch the football, and then make a move and pick up extra yardage. And that's exactly what he got done there. seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. Bad time to get a delay of game penalty there. Not that there's a good time, but that makes it third and six. Now it's Trubisky. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Well, we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Here's Pat O'Donnell now. He's been terrific so far. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. Now we're shot Penny. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. 
But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. They'll run it now, out of the gun. He'll get about three as he's taken down at the 23. Sometimes your philosophies get challenged at times you don't want them to. They did try to stick to the running game on the first two plays. Didn't amount to much. And now facing a third and long at the outset of this drive. And the Seahawks on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third and seven. From the shotgun, Wilson. And that is incomplete. Well, sometimes you just have to take things into your own hands, don't you? I mean, the offense is really struggling in this game. They're the ones keeping things going. They have to continue to play at that level. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. Taken in at the 22. 12 yards on the return that time. And out will come the offense as they take over. Now the Bears offense ready to take over again. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Yeah, he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. Again, it's Howard. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. Call it an eight-yard pickup, and it'll be third down. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. Trubisky will throw. He's got White here. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up, keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. Here's Pat O'Donnell now as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Here's Wilson. Well, the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. That one goes for 24 yards. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Second and 12 after the first down pass play went backwards for two yards. A handoff to Penny. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field 
despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed out and behind the line of scrimmage. Now it's Wilson. And he's got a man open. That's Marshall. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Needed 13. They got 14 on third down. Nice catch right there. Brings to mind the sentence, when in doubt, find your veterans. He used to laugh back in the day when they would call guys like him crafty veterans. You, know, you get up in your 30s, you're still playing receiver, but you're around that long at that position, you're doing something right. Just remember this. When he was young, he thought the crafty veteran was simply a guy who couldn't run anymore. Now he understands a little bit better. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. They go back to the ground now with Penny, and he'll get a little over two, maybe a full three down to the 32-yard line. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. He hits Baldwin right side. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. And the Seahawks on third down. They're hitting at just 30%, three for 10. This time it's third and three. Wilson. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off by Danny Trevathan. And he'll get this back to the 32-yard line. Charles, when plays like that work, it's a thing to behold, but sometimes we see why they're very deep in the playbook. And how many times have we been at practice and heard all the other guys chirping about, you know, I used to play quarterback in high school. I can do this until it becomes a game situation. Not quite the same in many cases. Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. There's definitely contact there, but it's the fourth quarter of a kind of tight game, and sometimes the officials just say, let them play. Kind of like your mom used to with you and your brothers, just take the broom to you and send you out to the backyard and tell you to settle <laughs> yourselves. I like that, yeah. There was contact. I don't know, like you said, enough to warrant the flag. It was close, though. Here's Trubisky, and he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. Call it a three-yard gain, and that'll lead here to a third down. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. ike has been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It was like he'd went to ballet school. Got the toes down and stayed in bounds. And Robinson with a big catch. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. A Chicago first down, the former Jag, Allen Robinson, on the catch from Trubisky. Trubisky now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. Looking to throw again, Trubisky. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. It's a gain of five on the play, and it'll bring up a second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. 
So the delay of game penalty moves it back five. That makes it second and ten. They run play action for Howard. Now Trubisky. And the Seahawks defense gets to him, and they bring him down. K.J. Wright, tough to handle on that blitz. He gets him for a loss of five. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. Well, you can see what they wanted to do. They wanted to set up the screen there, but it got blown up. It's hard to run that play if you're not getting a lot of pressure at the quarterback because the space doesn't open up. They were able to read that one and slow it down and stop it before they could get a first down. Give them 11 yards that time on the return, and it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. And the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. And the interception last time on the opponent's side of the field, certainly not what they wanted. Put it mildly, that is so frustrating because that signifies there's a drive going on. You're in a good spot, great place to run some of your best offense. Instead, they turn the ball over. They turned the ball over last time. See if they can avoid doing it here. Space to maneuver at the 40. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. They go with a shuffle pass, and it's complete. A gain of six there on first. Well, a clear running situation. Try to take time off the clock. You ran the previous play, set that play action up nicely. Boy, did they ever, because they had shown the ability to run the football. So now you lose your keys as a defense. You dive for the running play, and they hit them over the top. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion. So here's second and four. Play action. Now Wilson. And he almost had it defensively. Could have been a game changer there in this second half. Instead, it's third down. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got a lead. You've got to protect it. And he's taking chances putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? From the gun on third down, Wilson completes it to Dixon. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. It's a pickup of 15 and a fresh set of downs. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Here's a give to Penny, and he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up in the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. They'll run it now, out of the gun. An agile move and a nice gain, then dropped at the 25-yard line. Eight yards there on the carry, and now they're left with a much more manageable third and three. Well, with the fumble he had earlier, we, we know how key keeping the football is here. That fumble earlier probably at the forefront of his mind. Just hold on to this thing. It's also at the forefront of the mind of the guys who are trying to get the ball from him. And since they've seen him drop it on the ground before, they're doing everything possible to have him do it again. They need that turnover. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. 
That's a good job there, creating the contact to force the incompletion. And now, since it's fourth down, that should set up a field goal situation. And a nice sigh of relief defensively to be able to hold them to three. And Janikowski bangs it through. And now it's a two-score game at nine, 16 to seven. So that's a big one. Obviously, Charles makes it a two-score game, his third field goal of the game, able to knock it through. Yeah, not exactly free and clear yet, but as a defense, you get to play a little bit looser, don't you? Because you do now have a little bit of a margin of error, don't you? Now, after the made field goal, here's Sebastian Janikowski to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And right now, these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him punting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Now Trubisky to throw. The screen pass here to Cohen. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. Let's go, let's so go. they have the big loss on that first down pass play and facing a second and long. Out of the gun, Trubisky. Forced out to his left. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. K.J. Wright able to get in there and drop him behind the line. Remember, throughout my career here in defensive coaches, I always say, guys, you've got to earn the right to rush the passer. Well, they put themselves in a great spot with this big lead, and they know they've got to throw the ball. These pass rushers have to be salivating. It is pin your ears back time indeed. They go play action. Trubisky. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. And all the way down to the 29. Trubisky hitting Robinson for a big one. 51 yards. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. They'll throw on first down with Trubisky. He's going to take a shot for the end zone. He rifles one that's intercepted. Shaquille Griffin with a pick. Partner, we always talk about possessions being at a premium in these games. And now in this situation, throwing an interception here when you have to claw your way back in, that one's going to hurt and in a big way. They go play action here on first down. He's got the tight end, Vanette. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. From the gun, it's Wilson. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. As a passer, you're always trying to find that open window to throw the ball downfield. How about this one? Right in the middle of the field, right in the heart of a defense. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll get this up over the 25 to the 26. They give him four yards there, it'll be second and six. You can really tell right now both sides have amped up the aggressiveness. That time the offense winning the aggression battle. And the defense was obviously aiming for the football, maybe a little bit more so than the runner himself. And that's why he was able to break through and get the gain that he did. Go 
On second down, here's Penny. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Third down, Penny. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. And whistles, and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. And now the Bears coming out as they get ready. And in enemy territory last time through the interception. We'll see what they do on this drive. Can't wait to see how it alters what they decide to do in play calling. Do they continue to throw the ball? Do they want to lean more on the running game? It'll be an interesting sequence of plays that they've got coming up. Does it often affect the play calling with the interception? How, how much does that change what you do? I think it does depending on why the interception was thrown. Sometimes it's just a matter of the defense made a great play so you continue to come back. But if it's on you, if the offense just doesn't have the confidence, if they're a little bit shaky, maybe try and take the pressure off and run the ball a little bit. Throwing now is Trubisky to the sideline, and oh, that's well done. Able to drag the feet, he's going to have the first down. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. Little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. Now it's Trubisky toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Trying to get it to Tariq Cohen out of the backfield. That'll bring up second down. The touch and time are critical for those types of throws. He put a lot of zip on that one. Needed just a little bit more finesse trying to get it to his back. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Here's Trubisky. Wide open receiver complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. Trubisky to throw. That is caught by Cohen. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. And a nice gain of 21 yards. On first down, Trubisky. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. What's the old adage, be quick but don't hurry? Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of, otherwise he was going to get sacked. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Throwing once more, it's Trubisky. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked off by the all-pro free safety, Earl Thomas. And his guys are going to take over at the 31-yard line. 
I'm not sure, Brandon, we've seen a sloppier played game this year for a team on offense. Turn it over four times and expect to win? No chance whatsoever. And look, I have no idea what the ratio is about turnover four times and how that correlates to winning or losing, but I guarantee you, it's not very good. And they take a knee. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right? Just us against the world and get it done. <laughs> How happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you prime the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. With that, we say good night from Chicago.